Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here. Uh, welcome to my studio, hope everyone's well. Today I'm going to just do a really quick uh, sketch of some flowers and I don't know how this is going to turn out but um, first of all I'm going to do this, uh, so keep watching and then I'm going to talk about a method of organising your doodles once I've done that. I've got my kiritake set here because um, I don't think there's anything quicker than a kiritake set. That doesn't mean to say that um, it's the only way to paint and soon I'm going to be uh, moving into a uh, little bit of an exploration of Paul Rubens but for the minute I'm going to do this and we'll just see what happens. Um, this is very very wet the idea is the colours are going on as wet as wet can be and this is a hot pressed paper. I'm afraid I don't know what type but it is hot press and I'm going to do this really quick probably waste a lot of paint um, but it's um, it's just a, a, a relaxation thing really to get me going. And then I'm going to go and make lunch and uh, then I'm going to come back and it will be dry and we will um, add some doodles to this perhaps, I don't know, we'll see what happens, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do. Um, let me see, let's Let's have something like this. And I'm using black a lot because I want some very high contrast. And you've got the black mixed with the red there, which is quite interesting. I'm just going to try and put a little bit more of that red in the background there but without touching. So. Just try not to let it touch too much. And um, something blue maybe, or purple, oh no, blue, blue, I did um, blue, green, greeny blue, something, something like this perhaps. These colours might look too dark to you at the moment, but if we're going to doodle on top of them, which I was thinking I probably would, then we don't want them to be pale, do we? That's starting to look a bit like a corn cob, isn't it? That wasn't quite what I had in mind. I'm going to put um, some orange in the middle there, I think, to just to finish the corn cob resemblance. There we are, and then maybe we'll have a small picture, a small picture, a small, it's amazing what comes out of your mouth when you aren't concentrating. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to let that dry. Okay, so that's dry. And the next thing to do will be to embellish that and do some doodles on top of it, just for the heck of it. And so I thought I would show you this, which is, I'll just move this up a bit so you can see what it is. It's a 
um, ring binder, this one, and I've put on the, um, what do you call it, the spine, I've um, put a piece of card in there which I had prepared as a bookmark, but then I realised I'd got something on the back of it so it couldn't be a bookmark. I've written doodles on there and so that's that nicely labelled. And inside I've got these um, plastic pockets which fit into the ring binder. I think it's best if you have ones with four rings because it holds them, stops them from slipping backwards and forwards. And then inside these, the what, what I think is possibly for me, the one of the best ways of doing it, and I do this with lots of inspiration work too, because then you can just flip through it like a book. And um, so these are not in any particular order, but I've got um, all sorts of different doodle ideas, which I've gathered from here and there, and so on and so forth. Some are better than others. None of them are particularly wonderful, but they're all different. And flicking through this before you start to do your um, doodle on your latest piece of um, art is often a good idea. For example, I'd forgotten about this idea. Um, yeah, it kind of just wakes things up in your head. And uh, you can do little drawings on these swatch squares if you want, or you can, you know, I mean, it's very helpful. This is quite interesting. This is actually sort of doodling with paint, and I haven't really done much of that yet. But um, so I know it's a bit shiny and you probably can't see perfectly well, but but I can. Um, and here are some nice uh, flower shapes and so on and so forth in this one here. So all of this is, is useful when it comes, and there's some sheep. Um, when it comes to thinking of what to put on your latest creation. So I'll put that out of the way there and we've got this. So let's find a white pen. Um, I think either of these would do. This is a Pentel um, hybrid gel. What's it called? Hybrid gel grip DX. Honestly, I hope you're not supposed to remember these things. This is a Uniball Signo, which we use quite a lot. Um, then for black, I have been using recently the Windsor & Newton fine liners, which seem to be quite good. If we wanted to put gold, I would use the Signo um, Uniball in gold for that. And, um, and yes, so oof, I'm going to sit down. And let's see what we can do with this. This um, flower here is crying out for white dots. It's just screaming at me. Can you hear it? And um, so then, so I've done that. That didn't take long, did it? Um, maybe we'll put a few circles on there as well. Something like that. And then we could... Um, we could do lines on each individual leaf, for example, like that. It's quite a nice, strong colour, that red. That's, um, I think that's cadmium red. And um, Let's see, so we could do the lines on the leaves in black, for example, couldn't we? And I mean, you can do something simple. You can sing something simple like that, or you can do something more complex. You can go around the outside if you want. I quite like going around the outside, but going outside of the paint, if you know what I mean, or a long way inside of the paint. And we just vary what we do. Just anything, because everything sort of looks more fun when you have embellished it. Sometimes I think my paintings look really boring when they haven't got embellishment on. That's when you've been looking all the time at things that are embellished. And you can put little white dots inside the black rings you're feeling really OCD. 
in little rows of dots wherever you feel like it. They look quite nice. I could put some of those down the middle too. These pens are really good for that, little dots like that. And I'll tell you what, that makes me think we could put dots around the outside of this, like as if we were doing a um, patchwork or a quilt, you know, hand stitched, the hand stitched painting. What do they call it? Um, slow stitching, is it? Someone mentioned to me a while ago that one of their favorite occupations was slow stitching. And I, I think it's hand sewing. I'm not, I'm not sure whether there's any real difference between uh, what we used to call hand sewing, which is when you make something by hand, and this um, slow stitching thing. I, uh, but anyway, it seems to produce some very lovely needlework. We called it needlework at school, didn't we? I just remembered. Um, yeah, we had needlework one year. We had a whole term, if not two terms, of needlework. It was quite good. quite liked that. Maybe we did it for a year. And some people did embroidery. I didn't do embroidery. I can't remember why. I think perhaps I was, I don't know. I think I did art instead. That's it. Yes, I remember now. I did art instead. Of, it was art or needlework. They liked the girls to do something, you know, with their hands. They didn't like us to be lopsided and um, only interested in sport or only interested in science or only interested in music or... Um, acting and stuff like that. They, we had a very good grammar school education system in England in the 1960s, I have to say. I don't think it's as good now as it was then. We, we were really lucky because we had teachers, uh, women, and in those days, believe it or not, I'm so old that it is the case that when, um, when I was at school, believe it or not, um, female teachers weren't allowed to get married. They had to stay single, and if they got married, they had to, to leave. Um, but that changed, I think, in about 1963 or 4, um, while I was at, at school. I remember my form teacher, her name was Miss Pettit, this was at Chislehurst and Sid Cup Girls Grammar. Um, she got married and she became Mrs. Sergeant. She married a chap who lived down the way, who was the son of the owners of Sergeants, which was a big garage, big uh, motor sales. Uh, what do you call them? Um, you know, where you sell, where they sell cars. Uh, we call them garages in England, but I don't think you call them that in in America, do you? Um, car showroom, that's what it was. I don't know why I'm talking about this. Sometimes I think about the teachers I had when I was at school and I'm looking at myself and I'm uh, at, right at the end of my 60s and I'm thinking, oh, you know, Miss Pettit, she was, I was, I was 11 and she must have been about 25. So she would now be about 85. I wonder if she's still alive. And it's funny to think of those people that you knew when you were at school and you never saw afterwards and wondering what their life involved over all those years. And it's now over. Is that maudlin? I don't know if that's... A that's, that's me being um, uh, I don't know me being me I suppose okay so we have that and then um, what should we do next let's 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 put some white no it doesn't want to work oh that's the wrong one I put some white on here 
And this white, this, um, uh, what's it called? I don't know how you're supposed to remember this. The hybrid gel. It dries whiter than it looks when it first goes on. So when you, if you buy one of these, um, first of all, once it gets flowing, it seems to be better. And then it does seem to dry a bit lighter, a bit whiter than it seems at first it's going to. Okay, so we're just putting leaves. on this flower and then let's do some parallel lines on this one. There we are. And we put some dots coming down here. One of the things that's um, problematic about having animals, as you know, is that it's really difficult to. Um, Um, go away on holiday. If you have one dog, it's not difficult to find a place and you can leave it with a friend or you could put it in a kennel, you know, a pet hotel. But when you've got um, sheep and chickens as well as five cats and four dogs. That is not funny. And what we've done in the past, we've used trusted house sitters. I don't know if you've heard of trusted house sitters. They are international now. I think they started in England. And um, we've had people come and stay with us and look after our animals and not stay with us, stay in our house while we've gone away. And... Um, that's worked really well. We did it every year for about five years. We did it before COVID. Um, we had people from, I think we had some people from South America, Venezuela, I think it was. They were lovely. Was it, or was it Argentina? One of those countries down there. They were absolutely fantastic that couple. And uh, we had others as well who were less fantastic. One couple did a bit of damage because they tried to set fire to the kitchen and they didn't realise that the roof was leaking. Um, but that's the only time we've ever had any difficulties. Um, I think we'll go to black here. And I, th I think um, we might want to put some spirals on here. Can't be doing without spirals. Uh, and we've had English people and we had some people from, oh yes, I remember we had some people from Ice, Iceland and they were absolutely divine. I mean, we, we've met some really nice people and they've looked after our animals and our house, which is a bit chaotic sometimes really well anyway why am I talking about this because I just suddenly was thinking I could do with a holiday couldn't you after all of this stuff that's been going on and uh, maybe I should try and find somebody 
again. Or if you know anyone who wants to come and stay in France for a few weeks or a few months or and use my studio to paint in while I go away and lounge around in the south of France, in Spain, or yeah, can't see it happening in the near future. And the reason is because since COVID, I've become a little bit more cautious. I used to be very slapdash about things and, you know, happy-go-lucky, I think is the word, but nowadays you sort of think, oh, I'm not sure that I, well, I suppose things have got better now, haven't they? It's not like it was in the height of the pandemic when everything shut down. And I expect you can probably rely on people to be healthy if they came Anyway, just putting roses on that one. The little leaves. And maybe that wants a little touch of white in there to liven it up, perhaps. Perhaps in the, I don't know, maybe it doesn't. Uh, I don't think I'd bother with that. Um, and then down here, this is, this is a challenge. What are we going to do with that? Um, I think I'm probably going to do this. What do you think? Doesn't look quite so much like a corn cob now. That's better. And uh, put a little dot of white in there. And then we've got this leaf. I think what I'm going to do here, I'm going to. Ooh. That didn't work very well. The pen doesn't want to do what I wanted it to do. Oh dear. So I can show you, because that one's gone badly wrong, but it's possible to wash this paint, because it is paint. I think what's in, in those pens, I think it's paint. So you can just wash that mistake away. That's okay, isn't it? So I'll let that dry and come back to that later. And meanwhile, we come over to this one. And let me think, I'm looking at my book and wondering, I don't want to do the um, radioactivity sign again that I did on one of my uh, things the other day. That was unfortunate. Okay, so let's, let's do this. We'll come out here, four lines like that. And then I'm just going to do some some flowers like that and then we'll do some dots above like that and then maybe in here we might do some little ones whatever we can fit in like that. And then let's do some little leaves at the bottom. And some veins going up. Like that. And we could have little skirts on these down the bottom too. And we could do, because we haven't got very much space, but we just put some dots on there. And then maybe a circle on the top, like that. And these could be a bit bigger. There we are. And then 
we need to do these ones. So how about something like that? If you keep your inspiration material handy, I think you'll find that your ability to invent new uh, doodles will grow in leaps and bounds. I've said before, I don't consider myself to be a particularly imaginative person. Um, but I do know that practice improves you. And uh, I'm just going to slightly correct this leaf here. I was leaving this petal, I was leaving this to the end because I wasn't sure how this one was going to go, whether that was going to look right or wrong. And it definitely looks wrong. So we we'll just um, finish that one off because it was a bit sloppy, a bit slapdash. I did like that comment from that lady who said that she and her husband had had a hilarious time that evening of that video where I said that someone had called me slapdash. Um, I'm sure she didn't mean it badly at all. Um, and they were saying, oh, you've prepared dinner in a very slapdash way or you're making that bed in a very slapdash manner. And she said, I hadn't heard that expression before. That's so funny. And we can finish those off with white dots once that's dry. And we're going to try this one again now. And I'll go slower. There we are. And I'm not going to try and do what I did before because it clearly doesn't want to work there. Um, but what I will try is this. Good, okay, so that's all right. And we can come back up here. It's not quite dry, but we'll pretend it is, just so that we can finish it off. Don't like the gold there either. I don't think that works. Um, I'm a bit wary about gold because it can take over, so... Um, and quite often when I put it in, I find I've made a mistake and I don't like it. So we'll cover that up. This one's all right. It doesn't look too bad. And uh, these ones on the ends here, they have to be finished. And what we'll do is just literally join them to one another. Like that. I can feel that in later. Now it's very a very clean design. This it's got no background color. It's on um, hot press paper, so it took the pen really, really well. And the color sits on the surface. It doesn't go in to the paper the way it does on cold press paper. So you get quite a brilliant um, result. And um, so there we are. I think um, if you are interested in setting yourself up some kind of a collection of doodles, this would be a good way to do it. This is a one and a half inch, I think, binder. And as you can see, it's easy to keep them, easy to flick through and get ideas. And it might even, this is a painting that wasn't finished. This is what you might call a start. And uh, I never finished it. So yeah, that's on the back of something else. This, which did turn into a video, that one did. So, and that reminds me that that's what I did. And so I don't forget. And then when I next time can't think of anything to paint, I don't go to Pinterest and look or scroll around on the net, re destroying my eyesight. I heard, when I was in England um, last time, I went and had my eyes tested and the optician had a photo of his children in the office and both of them were wearing really strong glasses. And I said to him, isn't this um, awful how many children nowadays are having to wear glasses? And he said, seven out of 10, seven out of 10 children in England now 
need corrective um, eyewear. And uh, that's absolutely shocking. It used to be much, 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 much less than that. I mean, I think when I was at school, probably only three or four of the girls in the class I was in had glasses um, out of 30. So that's completely different, isn't it? And it's because he said, he said himself he did, he did this optician. He said it's because they spend too long looking at screens and they don't exercise their eyes by throwing balls and playing cricket anymore. So I think that's a shame. So I do try, I am trying to limit the amount of time I spend staring at a screen, but you can imagine that doing what I'm doing at the moment, it's not easy. However, I do what I can and this is what I can do, so I'm doing it. And I hope you decide to do it too. Join me in a binder fest. And um, yeah, so I'll let you go now. I've stopped yakking and I will see you soon. Hope everybody is keeping well. And I'll see you at the weekend with something interesting to do with Paul Rubens. I have something to show you. So bye-bye for now, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>